So where does this leave us? We've talked about pulling in the information from the supply chain around the key performance trade-offs and, and the costs and risks of flexibility. We've talked about information coming in from the front end of the business around what it means if we're late or if we're short uh, on product to customers, the cost, the risk to revenue. Well, when we combine all those pieces, we've got this integrated performance view. What does that do for the company overall? Well, the key thing that it does is it provides an integrated view of the financial trade-offs of the key decisions that are being made both on the front end and on the supply chain. It allows us to draw alignment and accountability around those so that we are integrating in a way that, that is meaningful because it's capturing the uncertainty that we know is fundamental to our business, uh, those key trade-offs. So what's an example of that? An example would be, let's say we've got two key product lines. One of them is a, is a new product, critical to growth share, key fo focus of the company, a lot of margin and future customer relationships at risk. Another one is a more mature product, lower margins, you know, less to do in terms of market development and building market share. Typically, the company would choose to do two very different things. And people intuitively know that, but do they have the infrastructure to look at a clear set of metrics that says, here's why we need to have the upside availability on that critical new product up to this level versus that level. Here's how we identified that range, and here's how we feel comfortable. This statistics and analysis that range that demand range was based on. Mm -hmm. Here's the information we got from the supply chain on their assurance that they can deliver that level of flexibility and the costs that go along with that. So what that means is, and, and the, the words that seem to resonate with folks, is a, is a no surprises, no excuses view of future performance. What that means is I know where my demand could come in, and if I wake up at the end of the quarter, which perhaps is the, the, the time horizon I'm planning over, and I see that we came in at the 90th percentile of demand, well, I had a set of numbers for that and a set of accountabilities that, that went with that. Supply chain had committed to deliver to that level. They had cost numbers, they had lead time numbers. Did they make those numbers? Same thing if we come at the low end of that range, a whole different set of expectations that were set that embedded our notion of what that range would be, that embedded what the supply chain had committed to. So now we have the framework to one, really align the business on executing to our key goals, and second, we can clearly drive ongoing performance improvements by saying, with that view, where's the biggest bang for the buck for improvement? Is it if we narrowed that forecast range through a forecasting initiative or different ways that we worked with a customer, hey, we, we know what that would do if we could reduce that range size, it reduces our cost of flexibility. Or is it some things that we can do on demand management or, or things of that nature, but you've got alignment and accountability despite being an environment of uncertainty.